What's up, everybody? Welcome to Indie Comics Review. This week, I'll be doing three reviews um, from recent weeks of books that I have read. Uh, and also, at the end of the video, I'll be giving away a copy of Ha Ha Number 4, the cover B. So be sure to stick around for that. But let's get started with the reviews. First up this week is Blowtorch. Blowtorch is from Second Sight Publishing. It is written by Alfred Page and Alex DeGrunchy and the art is by Montos. Uh, Blowtorch is about this guy named Richard Kincaid. Uh, Kincaid's code name is Blowtorch, and he's uh, an agent for this organization called Chess. Uh, and Chess has headquarters, Chess, Chess's headquarters is somewhere in Colorado, and uh, Blowtorch, aka Richard, or Richard, aka Blowtorch, uh, experienced some horrific accident like eight years ago. Uh, they don't really go deep into it, but they give you just a little insight into his into his, his origin. He was probably disfigured. And a nurse, a nurse named Suzanne, helped to nurse him back to health. And this nurse contacts uh, Blow Torch one day, saying that, you know, there's some shit about to hit the fan, and can you please come help us out? Um, he once had a relationship with Suzanne. Uh, they were an item, uh, but somehow he uh, messed it up. And um, she ended up getting with this this friend of his, or another another agent, I should say. Uh, but that agent really treated her badly, and they broke up. But uh, once you know Suzanne calls, uh, Richard responds because uh, he still has a, a deep bond with her. Now Suzanne is working at this uh, secret government organization at this place in Colorado. That's uh, it's, a, it's like a, a top secret project, and they're trying to make super soldiers out of uh, dead American soldiers. After he gets that frantic call from Suzanne, uh, Blowtorch heads off uh, to uh, Colorado to help her out. But um, his fellow agent, one of his fellow agents, her name is, her name's Rowan. Uh, her her code name is Footpath. Rowan says, uh, look, uh, you're, you know, we're partners, uh, you're my teammate. Just tell me what you need and uh, I'm there with you. So they both set out to Colorado uh, to uh, see what's going on at this at this site. Uh, the black and white artwork by Montos is really fantastic. I mean, I don't mind at all that this is a black and white book. Um, the story is, is very good as well, um, and they reveal a few clues about uh, about Blowtorch along the way. But this is not an origin story per se. It's um, uh, it's, it's his first um, issue, and they, they introduce him pretty. Um, they introduce stuff about him just a little bit a little bit at a time which is kind of cool um to me it reads kind of like a really good action movie uh if you're a fan of action movies like from the 80s or that kind of thing you probably should you could and probably will enjoy this so even though it's a oh even though it's a one shot i really get the feeling that uh we have not seen the last blowtorch in fact i've um i've seen a, a book that's been solicited uh it may be out already uh called chess which is uh, about this um, the organization that, that they uh, they both work for. Um, overall, I, I give it a, a definitely a thumbs up, uh, especially for the, the artwork alone uh, makes uh, Blowtorch definitely worth picking up. All right, the next book is Black Cotton. Uh, this is from Scout Comics, and it's written by Patrick Foreman and Brian Hawkins, and the art is by Marco Perugini. Um, Black Cotton takes place in a world where racial dynamics are reversed. Uh, blacks are the majority and uh, whites are a minority. And uh, the story begins after a black police officer shoots an unarmed white girl. Uh, the officer turns out to be part of a billionaire family named Cotton. The family is ruled by their, their, their patriarch, Elijah Eli Cotton, as he goes by. Eli spends most of the first issue trying to get on top of the situation, which uh, is getting worse and worse by the day. Um, there are protests, uh, White Lives Matter signs are popping up all over the place. Um, and they're, they're trying to uh, paint the Cottons as villains in, in the media. And the officer who committed the, uh, the shooting, uh, the member of the Cotton family who committed the shooting, he really seems to want not much to do with the family. And he's uh, kind of over the whole uh, uh, rich family thing. He has chosen life as a, as a cop, so that kind of speaks for itself. And the thing about the Cotton family, they, they seem to really believe, uh, they believe themselves to be superior to whites and to just, you know, the common folk in general. 
They have this seem like an elitist attitude, though, the majority of the family. And Black Cop is another black and white comic, uh, but it's not the, the art is not as good as Blowtorch. Uh, I think if the cover artist had done the interior art, then it would have been much better. Uh, the artwork notwithstanding, I would still like to see uh, more of this story. It's, 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 very, it's kind of, it's unique and interesting. Like, what is the history of the Cottons? Um, what historical events led to blacks being the majority? Was there white slavery? No, I have so many questions. Uh, so, since I was late jumping on this book, uh, I think I may be content to wait for the trade to find out the, the rest of these answers to, to those questions. Um, but I still, I still want to know what what, uh, what the uh, the history and uh, the background of the story is, uh, even though not much was revealed in the first issue. So even though I I like the uh, the story more so than the artwork, uh, Black Card still gets a recommendation just because of the uh, uh, just for the story. Actually, uh, I think it can overcome this artwork if the the story is good enough and the concept that it's based on is good enough. So I, I don't know, I'm curious to see what's gonna unfold in the next few issues of this book. But like I said, I may wait for the trade just for that to happen. So uh, I do recommend it, but uh, uh, you know, I, I'm gonna wait to see what happens and maybe pick up the trade later. The last book is Whale's Bill. Uh, it is from uh, Bad Idea Comics and it's written by Matt Kent. Uh, who was killing it, by the way. He, uh, he writes both stories. There's actually two stories in this book, Whalesville and Rocks and Minerals. And uh, the art on, Adam, on, um, on Whalesville is by Adam Polina. And uh, the art on uh, Rocks and Minerals is Tony Millionaire, which is uh, one, of the, you know, one of my favorite cartoonists. Whalesville, as the title may suggest, uh, is not only about a whale, but it's about this uh, this whole society or this this like ecosystem that's been uh, kind of uh, evolved inside of a whale. S some of the inhabitants are like a, a crab named Caleb, a, a seagull named Jack, and a fish inside of a bag that's riding a roller skate named Angela. Yep, <laughs> absolutely, it's that kind of a book. Um, and one day a boy. Uh, this all of a sudden just washes up inside the whale on the, on the shore of, of, the, of the whale, of, of, on the inside of what the shore of what they believe to be their world. And um, these residents have never even seen a human being, so it's a, it's a big deal for them. And they, have, they have no idea what a boy is, they have no idea what a whale is, uh, you know, the whole deal there. Um, at, at first, the kid is kind of like way groggy and he doesn't know where he's at. And as, as things start to come back to him, he realizes who he is and how he got there. Um, and then as he starts to tell the, uh, the other inhabitants of the, of the whale, of that world, that uh, there's a whole other world outside there and that uh, they need to get out and, or if they were to get out, you know, they'd be able to experience a whole lot more than just what they had. Cause they were all just born. Every every creature in there was was born and lives inside that whale, and that's the only world they've ever known. But as the, the kid tells them about what's outside, that they just kind of like look at it like he's crazy. Like hey, this is you know this is uh, this is our world, and this is all we know. We're not going to risk uh, anything else. It really uh, it is a lot of a lot of it's filled with metaphors for. Uh, for as you might imagine, for life and for as for for society in general, as both the stories are. So I'll get back to you. Rocks and minerals takes place in a world where uh, people no longer exist. Uh, they've been uh, made extinct in something they refer to as the uh, the big polishing. And uh, rocks, minerals, and rubbles and rubble <laughs> now rule the world. And uh, they reign supreme. Uh, and there are places in this world where uh, they are forbidden to go. And those are referred to as the unpolished zones. Um, if anyone gets caught in, the, in those unpolished zones, they are mercilessly punished by the queen, uh, who's a diamond. Uh, but the thing is, uh, 
the princess, the queen's daughter, uh, likes to hang out in the unpolished zones with uh, two of her friends who are pieces of rubble. So you get the metaphors there. Uh, one day they run across uh, this turtle that they first mistake for another rock. And they set out on a mission to eventually help this turtle find a pond because it's, it's freaking out because you know it, it, it can't find a pond and somehow it gotten confused and it wants to lay its eggs. Uh, so they befriend this turtle and they, uh, they, they try to you know, take care of it in that way. Uh, this leads to some, obviously some, uh, some, some, some conflict between uh, the princess and the queen. And uh, there are some issues that arise from that. Uh, and then both of these stories uh, are, are written with um, a, a similar feel to them. Uh, they're loaded with metaphors, and, and uh, in my opinion, you know, it's uh, you know, they're both entertaining for all ages. Uh, they, um, they, 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 they uh, I think uh, there was like a metaphors for uh, for racism and for just uh, people being single-minded and afraid to move outside of their of their comfort zones. Uh, re really good, really good stories of. Uh, without being preachy, without being over the top, you know. So I think these could um, these these really read well. And uh, Matt Kent, kudos to him for for being able to tell these stories without uh, without sounding cliche. So man, uh, and and the artwork. Oh man, um, uh, in both stories, the artwork is great. Uh, Tony Millionaire just one, in my opinion, uh, one of the the, the best uh, cartoons walking the planet. Um, Adam Polina's work is like uh, what you would see in a, in a really nice children's book. Uh, different from his work in uh, the superhero comics, uh, I think. Um, and, and even though uh, they're, 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 very, they're very different in their style, I think uh, these, uh, these artists very, very much complement each other. I don't know what the process was uh, made as far as who chose the, the artist to go with the, both those stories, but uh, man, man, they did a great job, whoever it was. And this is just another home run for Bad Idea Comics. It was just, uh, you know, hitting it out all over the place. That they're just, uh, they just can. I've not seen them do a, a bad story yet. Um, yeah, if you, you can get your hands on a copy of Whale's Wheel, it's uh, as, as a lot of the Bad Idea Comics are kind of hard to come by, and it's a little pricey on uh, eBay right now. And I'm not even sure they're going to do a not second print the way they did for um, for Eniac. Hopefully they will, but uh, if you can get a hold of this book, my God, please do so. This, this is a, a book worth reading, uh, Whalesville and Rocks and Minerals, the combo <laughs> story there. Um, as a uh, kind of a, uh, an afterthought, uh, someone mentioned uh, they had a trouble. They had trouble getting a copy of the Heroes Reborn number one. Um, I was lucky enough to get like the copy of uh, with the. Uh, the Princess Power, I think the name of her, or the character is. She's like a Wonder Woman knockoff in this uh, Heroes Reborn world. Uh, it was okay. Uh, I'm not going to go that route as I as I said before, but it doesn't mean that you know it's not a good book uh, because uh, I'm just choosing it to not do as many superhero uh, books or many Marvel and DC superhero books as I as I have done before. But I, I think that this is a yeah, I mean, if you can get that first copy, uh, you know, read it and see what you think about it. You know, it's a, uh, you know, Blade is a major player in this uh, this universe. Um, Cap was never found uh, in the ice by the Avengers. There's no Avengers. Um, uh, Coulson, <laughs> Coulson is president, and he's he's kind of kind of kind of shady. So they, they kind of may have turned him into a, a bad guy. Um, yeah, and so and the, the ending is. Kind of a cliffhanger that's, that that might play out uh, and, and turn things a certain way, but um, yeah, you know it's it, it's it's it's, it, it's your, your typical superhero mainstream fair, you know, trying to get you to you know buy the buy the whole event thing. But uh, it, it could be interesting if you're into that kind of thing. So just just FYI, you know, for that. Um, now. Let's get to the uh, the fun part, which is this week's drawing, which is going to be for the uh, Ha Ha number four, Ha Ha number four B cover, and I've got everything all all laid out here. 
uh, only of maybe 10 contestants in this week's uh, this week's uh, drawing. So, pretty good chance. 10% chance, everybody. All right, reaching in, not looking, got it picked already. All right, who is it gonna be? Oh, the tension, I tell you. Oh, I know. All right, Luab the Comics, L-U-A-B-E-D, Comics. That's who's got it this week. Uh, yeah, so congratulations, Luab Comics. If you're watching this, uh, email me with your shipping information. I'll get that book right out to you ASAP. So that's it for this Indie Comics review. Um, thanks for stopping by. Uh, be sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and hit the notifications button so you know when I'm making my next video. Uh, until next time, folks, uh, I'll see you in my next video. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and leave a thumbs up.